Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast with my special guest, Professor Sherman T. Klump. Professor, it is a pleasure to have you back again. It's a pleasure to be back, Andrew. Uh, very good. So what are we going to do tonight, Andrew? Uh, what plans do you have for Saturday night for us? Well, Professor, I'm going to do what I do every Saturday night, and that's try to take over the world. And that's one podcast at a time. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I guess we should tell everybody what day it is. Yes, I guess we should. It is uh, Saturday, April 1st, 2017. It's April Fool's Day, so uh, happy April Fool's Day to everybody that had a uh, blast today. Uh, I unfortunately did not have a chance to do anything uh, prank-wise, mostly because I was tired and really wasn't in the mood to do it. I was struggling all week to come up with a prank for the podcast, too, and I just could not uh, come up with one. And I, it kills me that I, it, it just kills me that I couldn't uh, come up with a good prank. I really wanted to do something good, and it just kills me that I couldn't come up with anything. But anyway, this week I'm going to be discussing the Power Rangers movie. As I promised everybody I was going to talk about that this week. You knew I was going to talk about it this week. I'm also going to be discussing the High School of the Dead manga creator. Who uh, sadly passed away at age 52. It's really very sad actually. On top of that, my other topics for the week. Warner Brothers is going to be looking to Swedish directors to helm the live action Akira film. I think the professor and I have some uh, comments on that. Uh, let's see. There is a Sailor Moon Club. I know Robin over at Anime America will be happy about happy to hear about that, and she's probably vomiting rainbow as we speak. Mobile Fighter G Gundam is finally punching its way into the Crunchyroll. Yeah, about damn time if you ask me. A man admits to releasing cockroaches at an anime music event. Uh, I believe it was last year, or last summer, so that's kind of interesting. Cartoon Network royally pissed off and confused a lot of people with their stupid April Fool's Day prank, and it's one that would have made me uh, boycott their channel for the whole 24 hours, even though I don't have cable anymore. And then I have a special viewer request for a topic this week. That's right, a special viewer requested topic. And don't forget... And uh, don't forget, you can request topics here on the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast. You can tweet them to me on Twitter. You can follow me at Otega Roads, and you can tweet them to me. <clears throat> or you can email them to acrpodcast at gmail.com. Either way, uh, it's nice to have some, you know, newer uh, thoughts and other things. So it's kind of neat. Uh, but as always, uh, those are the topics I'm going to be talking about this week. And as always, if you're interested in trading cards and whatnot, come check out my eBay page, A Roads 2012 on eBay. Uh, I do have some comic books I'm going to finally be getting pictures of, I believe, Monday. Not Monday, probably sometime this coming week, which I'm going to be going into, I say, sometime this coming week. I'll uh, we'll explain that in a little bit. I do have some stuff that I am putting up slowly. I do have a whole bunch of new Yu-Gi-Oh cards that are going to be going up. I do have a giant binder of Magic the Gathering cards that are slowly going to start going up because I really want that binder back. More to the point, I want the freaking trading card uh, pages out of it back. I can start putting my Yu-Gi-Oh cards in there. I got some miscellaneous trading cards that might soon be finding their way up. I even got some other oddities and weird shit that will be finding their way up soon. But, on top of all that, like I said, you can just always swing by, say hi. But a lot of stuff, definitely um, something like you can use for conversation starters, just oddities, some neat stuff too. But don't forget, you can just swing by just to say, hey, I looked at his page. It's A Roads 2012 on eBay. And like I said before, you can follow me on Twitter, at Otaku Roads. So, this week um, has been a lot of fun. Uh, what was a three-day work week was uh, very wonderful. And and it was brought to our attention that uh, next week our schedule is five. And it's one of the, just the weird way we're doing it. We're working Monday morning. Then we work uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So we get tomorrow, which is Sunday, which is well, today, I guess, is when I upload this podcast, and Tuesday off <laughs> for the entire week. 
And then we have a meeting then uh, next Sunday. So, yeah, my week's going to be full. So that's why I said when I uh, did the uh, ad for my, you know, since I do sponsor my own podcast. I mean, the lights got to stay on somehow, folks. Bill's got to get paid. Um, but that's why I said the co- I will be getting pictures. At least that's my plan uh, is to get pictures. If I don't get them up this week, don't shoot me. Don't go into the comment section and go, you lying son of a bitch. I, I'm forewarning you now. With that being said, uh, this was interesting. Though. I uploaded three brand new Andrew Rantz videos this week. And I'm happy and sad to say at the same time, one of them uh, has gone viral as far as I'm concerned. Now, I don't mean it's gotten a thousand views. If I ever get a video that's going to go a thousand views... I think I'll be hyperventilating. You'll be seeing me jump, doing jumping jacks, and all of a sudden I'll make CNN some idiot in Pennsylvania is jumping around on the roadways, going woo hoo woo hoo woo hoo woo because I'll have finally gotten a video that had that got like a thousand views. That's never gonna happen though. Uh, but no, it got like ten views in like two, in like two or three hours. It got like ten views, so I'm like, that's pretty cool. To me, that's kind of interesting. I think it's teetered off now. It's like a 20-something. But that kind of is interesting because my podcast, I'm lucky now if I get four views. And my Andrew Rance videos are getting like 10, 20 views. And I'm just looking at that going, and what's wrong with my podcast It's what I want to know. Like, you know, I like my podcast. I do this every week. I know my voice is annoying since it's like a static image, but... Keep in mind, I do that to avoid copyright. Now, the Andrew Rant stuff, it's mostly about something that's either A, already done by six or seven other people, B, all the stuff's widely available, or C, it's just something that I want to do. I mean, the second I get one complaint about it, I stop. Majority of the time, though, like the last two videos of the three that I uploaded, it was static images. So... Okay, well, static image uh, for two of them. It was the first two. Sorry, the first and the second one. The third one had a couple images in it because I was complaining about... I was uh, ranting about the Power Rangers movie that came out. So, there was that. But, otherwise, it's been, like I said, a fun week. I have my 44-ounce Dr. Pepper from my new favorite convenience store. The Fleetwood Food Market. One of my favorites. Those pe- the, the guy there is very nice that I usually deal with. Even the ones that are there when he's not there are nice. The store is very nice, very friendly people. I really love the store. It's a lot better than Turkey Hill. It's not ever setting foot on their property again. But that's neither here nor there. And I don't want to burden you with my problems. Let's get into the podcast. I've been talking for eight minutes so far, and I haven't even gotten into this thing. So let's, uh, let's get into this. Let's just start off with... Um, the thing for today is April Fool's Day. And a lot of places will do like April Fool's Day stuff. Uh, I remember a couple years ago when I was heavy into Pokemon, when I had uh, Pokemon Black and White. I, effectively, I still have that game yet. Because all my Pokemon are on there. My level 100 Charizard that I raised from a Charmander. Uh, I got ones that I traded friends for, that I traded online with the global thing when that was still available, which is no longer available the way I do it with the GTS because they shut that uh, that system down. But when I was uh, doing that, there was a Pokemon I wanted called Keldo. Well, technically I wanted Genesect, and I found out that Genesect was available via a <laughs> via a uh, in-store promotion. And I found out about it the week after the promotion. And I was pissed. Because I'm like, I wanted Genesect. I wanted Genesect like crazy. And to find out that, oh yeah, nobody's trading Genesect because it couldn't be traded over the thing. I'm like, son of a bitch. I mean, I got a Manipi that I really wanted back when it was still, uh... oh god, that was for um... Diamond and Pearl. Yeah. I got, yeah, Diamond and Pearl. I got a Manipi. I mean, I stood in line at that Toys R Us for that. I was one of the first seven people there. I'm getting stares because I'm like, I look like I'm a 40-year-old. And I'm only, at that time, I would have been like just maybe 20. Like maybe 19, 20. And I'm getting stares like, what's this person doing here? 
he's in the wrong place. There's a bunch of little kids are going to be here. I'm like, that's why I'm one of the first seven. I wasn't given it. Now, if it would have been like a rare Pikachu, I would have been number one. I'm sorry. I would have been number one in line. There would not have been anybody behind. There, there would have been everybody behind me, but there would not have been anyone in front of me except for the employees of the store. But, uh, so I remember years ago there was a event some that, uh, I think it was Pokemon Maryland because they were the ones that were keeping up to date with here's the release date for this little event Pokemon and they were saying the Keldo was available and I'm like oh cool I want to get this one and I go to uh, download the uh, Wonder Card for it and it's like well you already have this Wonder Card because it was for the Rush Ham or the Rush Ram and I'm like oh man they got me well that was years ago and then last year I just found today courtesy of Facebook by the way that uh, I remembered last year I got pissed off at a lot of the April Fool's jokes and pranks that a lot of uh, YouTubers were pulling. It had to be it was it's one of the main reasons why I stopped listening to, or even watching I should say the completionist videos, other than one that somebody sent me saying that I should watch the um, when he finally completed Tales of Symphonia because I was one of the many people bitching about that. But when that was all said and done. I mean, I, I stopped watching him entirely. All of his videos, I, I'm done watching him. I unsubscribed from him and everything. Because he did a review of a television show making it like a game, and it was for a show that should have really never been created in the first place because it was a spinoff of a show that I thought was very inappropriate to begin with. And that was the Brian Cranston program, Breaking Bad. It was the uh, spinoff Better Call Saul. So he, he did a thing like that, I'm like, that was the lamest joke I've ever seen in my life. And, and I'm thinking to myself, your videos were already kind of teetering on the edge because most of the games you reviewed were ones that I was really never going to play. Ones that I was really never, ever planning to do. And I'm like, okay, you're just kind of on the edge. And then it basically went from on the edge straight down to screw you, I'm done. And that's how I kept it for a long time then. But today, since it's April Fool's Day, this is my only April Fool's topic too, by the way, uh, Cartoon Network decided, according to Twitter, and this was trending on Twitter, by the way, this was highly trending on Twitter, Cartoon Network decided to put googly eyes on every single character on screen, not even, not, I I'm not joking on this, I should say. Uh, it was on screen characters as well as promo characters, like characters in the promotional ads for, like, here's what's coming up next. They had googly eyes on the characters. Now, Cartoon Network's already going downhill as it is. I mean, they're, the writing is literally in the sand. I'm not going to sugarcoat that. The writing's in the sand. The writing's in the sand. It's starting to get etched in the stone. Cartoon Network is done. The only thing they have right now that's saving their sorry asses is the Steven Universe, which uh, me and my one co-worker love. And if they screw that up or cancel that, they might as well just pack up their bags and call it a day. Uh, other than that, they have uh, Adult Swim, which is still pulling in people. But all they have anymore is stoner programming. And that's, like I've said multiple times, it's programming that you have to be high as shit in order to enjoy. And I mean like we're talking baked here. When I explained it to my coworker, I said, It's stoner programming. He goes, Huh? I said, well, it's programming you gotta be high as hell to un to even enjoy. And he goes, Oh, yeah. Yeah, I kind of agree with you on that. I mean, I've explained that multiple times. I'm not gonna go into it again, but I've explained it. But that's what they have now. Cartoon Network's programming though, besides Steven Universe has pretty much just been replaced with pure crap. I mean, we have um, the crap that was Clarence, Uncle Grandpa. Uh, we Bear Bears is just... Ugh. Uh, there's just so many horrible shows that they have on now. And it's like they got rid of everything that made Cartoon Network great and started transferring everything to this newer style of doing stuff. Instead of having 30-minute programs, we're going to have 15-minute episodes that are going to air so sporadically, you're not going to know what time it is. I mean, I remember 
when I was growing up, I could figure out what time it was by what was on television. If um, at the time it was uh, Top Cat. If Top Cat was on Cartoon Network, it was about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. If they had, um, there was a, there was a, like, a little, uh, programming block called High Noon Tunes, I knew it was 12, I knew it was 12 o'clock. That's either 12 or 12.30, or somewhere in between there. So I at least had a general idea based on what was on television at the time. Now, it's like, you're lucky if you know what time it is, because you could have an episode of The Amazing World of Gumball, and one episode's like 15 minutes. I'm being generous on that, by the way. And then all of a sudden, they'll shoot to an episode of Clarence right afterwards. And then they go back to Gumball again. So it's like, you really have no idea what's on versus what isn't on, what time it is based on what's on. You can't really enjoy anything because they're just taking one ep one half of an episode, actually, and just throwing it out. Here you go. That that's the episode. And it just boggles my mind that, they're, that they've been doing this. So for them to do something like this on April Fool's Day, putting googly eyes on all their characters, it's just them continuing their spiral straight down into no man's land. They know they're screwed. They know they're doomed. The writing, like I said, is, it is practically on the damn wall. And they know it. There's nothing they can do about it. So that's all there is to it. I mean, how much longer they have left uh, to be on the air is going to be a miracle. I mean... Is it going to come to the point that when I finally get a family, and I finally like have start a family, are my kids going to be able to watch Cartoon Network? I can't answer that. I mean, unless they get their shit together, I really can't answer that. I really can't. All right, so let's uh, go on to a bit of a somber topic here. Um, High School of the Dead manga creator Daisuke Sato passed away last week. At the age of 52, uh, he worked on. He also worked on the Imperial Guards uh, High School and High School of the Dead's uh, been on a hiatus since 2013. But he also worked on Imperial Guards. I never heard of that. Um, he passed away due to, and I'm gonna try to pronounce this correctly. I just can't get it right. Uh, ischemic heart disease. And I know, I know there's probably like somebody that knows medical jargon out there. It's spelled I-S-C-H-E-M-I-C. I do a, I, I can't pronounce it. I mean, I got D's in health class. I at least know the difference between a male and a female body. I know a basic first aid from watching ER every summer when I was, you know, on summer vacation from school. But as far as uh, pronouncing diseases, forget it. Forget it. I can't. Uh, he passed away uh, on March 22nd. He was 52. The immediate family have already had a funeral service, and his younger sister, uh, Yoko Shinmayo, uh, was the chief mourner. That's, that's very nice. Uh, Sato's works include High School of the Dead, High School, uh, yeah, High School of the Dead, and it's High School of the Dead in Japan. In the article they just get rid of the space. I mean, I know the concept of it, but it's the same damn word, guys. Come on. Uh, yeah, manga is the manga with art with artist uh, Shoji Sato and the Imperial Guards manga with artist Yo Ito or Yo Ito. Uh, High School of the Dead has been effectively on extended hiatus since March of 2011, although a new chapter did debut in April of 2013, and then I remember it kind of went immediately on hiatus again. So um, now this is kind of a somber thing, like is this going to be the end now of this manga series because the character, because the uh, creator is kind of gone? Or are they going to try to like wrap it up like he would have in one fell swoop and just make it kind of nice? Or, or, they, or are they just going to end it? I don't really know. But see, it's kind of sad when somebody passes away, especially manga creators like this, because the amount of work that they have to go through for their craft and for what they create is just staggering. Uh, if you ever get a chance... Uh, pick up a copy of Bakuman. It's the manga that basically details what it's like to be a manga creator or a manga key in Japan. And 
read it. I mean, you can read it for the plot. The, the plot's pretty much effectively what I'm getting at here, where you're basically sacrificing a lot of stuff in your life, running the risk and basically taking a gamble on, am I going to have a hit series that I'm going to be able to you know, keep going for like six, seven years down the road? Or am I pretty much going to be, you know, dead in the water in like two months? You know, you could just do one shots and have like temp jobs or something. I don't know. See, I I'm not sure how the entire Japanese infrastructure of financial systems work over there. Hell, I can barely figure out the difference in the difference between uh, the conversion rates, I should say, for yen and dollars. So, it's, I mean, I got it down to somewhat, but it fluctuates. So... There's that, but it's, it's a somber note uh, that Daisuke Sato has passed away. Uh, he was 52, so he's you know very young uh, to pass away. He still had he, he still could have had so much uh, to do in his life, so much more he could have given the world, and uh, it's just very sad. Uh, Fester Klump, uh, any words for encouragement? Uh, anything? It, it's it's very sad, Andrew. I will agree with you on that. It, it's sad when everybody passes away. I mean. You know, your loved one, a dog, a pet, anybody passes away. It's very, it's very, very sad. Very sad indeed. Um, he will be missed. Uh, any fans of the manga series will definitely miss him. He will be missed. I mean, I know I've confiscated a couple of them in class. Then again, I usually let my students read whatever they want. They want to come in, they want to read something, I let them read it. But, uh, it, it will be sad. He will be missed. So there is that. You know, he, he will be very dearly missed. Yeah, he will. So, uh, farewell, Daisuke Sato. May you rest in peace. All right. Let's get back on to topics of happier natures. Okay, somewhat happier. Warner Brothers! We all know Warner Brothers! They're the people that have been screwing up the DC Universe since what? Um, I want to say Batman Begins? <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Since Batman Begins. <clears throat> I know the Heath Ledger Joker in The Dark Knight wasn't too bad. I saw that movie with my best friend. Uh, that wasn't too bad. Though I'm not a big Batman fan. Never have been. I never really will be. Now, if they would have made one of the newer Batman movies with Mr. Freeze in it, I'll be there just to watch Mr. Freeze. So long as it's somebody that I think will actually do a good job playing Mr. Freeze, I will be there to see Mr. Freeze. I could give a flying rat's ass, because it'll probably be Ben Affleck at playing Batman. I could give a flying rat's ass what he's how he's doing Batman. I'm just going to be straight up watching this for Mr. Freeze. That, that's all it is. So, here we go. Uh, Warner Brothers is looking to Swedish directors to helm the live-action Akira movie. Now, this is the movie that has been in development hell for God knows how long. And they're finally trying to get uh, it out of there. Which is a miracle. But uh, they're basically looking at... Um, insert the name of any director you want. Just The only thing I ask is it not be Zack Snyder. I really don't want that. But, uh, you know, they're trying to find any director for the live-action Akira film. It's a lot, though. Because the person in the article has gone... That wrote the article, or since they typed up, and that name is... Let me scroll back up a little bit. Uh, Matt Shinley, yeah, this is good. Matt's usually pretty good at a lot of these. I laugh at a lot of the articles that he types up. Uh, he goes, I typed this... I typed something like this. Warner Brothers is looking at insert name of director in uh, parentheses for its live-action Akira film, but, uh, oh, uh, it's a lot. How many times has he typed that? Probably a lot. Uh, the long-delayed action version of the Kats, Katsuhiro, Katsuhiro, that's it, Otome, or Otomo, manga slash anime, well, technically it was an OVA, it was a movie, but still, uh, has been through more directors than I can count. It's been through more directors, I think, than uh, prostitutes go through uh, John's at a local in the red light district. There you go. Let me start that joke there. Um... But see more potential names have emerged, and they both happen to hail from Sweden. Uh, that's Daniel Espinoza, the director of the sci-fi horror film Life, and David F. Sandberg, director of the supernatural flick Lights Out. Okay, uh, Life. That's a movie that does not uh, thrill me. Confuses the hell out of me. Bothers me. 
annoys me, but confuses me. I hold no disrespect to anybody who directed the thing. It's just not your... The, the director is never actually in charge of how the movie got made. Let's remember this. The director is basically the one that sits in the chair and yells, Action! And cut! And then tries to give something in between those to try to figure out a way to make it seem a little better. They can't help of the writing... They can't help for the scripts that suck or the way the actors are. That's not, There's nothing they can do about that. They're handed something. It's, okay, we need to do this. This is how we're going to try it. And that, that's what they do. So we can't... I, I'm not blaming any director for any movie except for Zack Snyder. I, I will royally blame him left and right for the fiascos that were the DC movies. And I'm not that big a DC fan. But like I said uh, many, many podcasts ago... When you openly put out on the internet that you want rape in a Batman movie, I think that's when they should look at you and go, you need to step the beep back. Because all of a sudden, that's when you have officially crossed the damn line. Batman is a comic book. There are children that buy this comic to read it. Why? I don't know. But for you to go up and even make that comment that there needs to be more rape in a Batman movie, that you want Batman to basically be locked in prison and have the Universal drop the soap thing. That's where you need to stop, step back, and go, what the f*** am I done with my life? So, there is that. He's about the only director I will ever blame for anything. But, uh, to be clear, the men happen to share a common country, uh, but they're not being tapped to direct the film together. The whole uh, Northern European thing appears to be a coincidence. Eh, it usually is. Of the two, it sounds as if Espinosa is more likely to take the job as Sandberg has other commitments over the next few years at the studio. That's not too, under that's not too uh, unreasonable. Uh, the most recent director to be attached to Akira was James Cullet Sierra, who did not sound particularly enthused when interviewed back in 2015 about the project. Oh, well, that's just wonderful. So you pretty much have a person that's getting interviewed, and it was probably like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm in charge of Akira. Yeah. I don't think it's going to do anything, though. That's, that's, that's probably about how I don't even know that there was an interview. I'll have to look that up, I guess. Holy crap. But yeah, it doesn't sound particularly enthused. That would be a red flag right there for me. I'd be going, whoa, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean to tell me that you're not thrilled with the fact that you get to be in charge of a movie? That was an an it's a live-action adaptation of an animated movie that was a huge hit, by the way. I actually own a copy of Akira. I got it at my local Walmart for 5 bucks back in October. So I actually own a copy. I love it. I have yet to actually open that copy because I've seen it already on TV. That copy is like mine. So, I don't really know. But, yeah, it, the person, it, the director that they attach doesn't really sound thrilled about the project. That's probably a problem. Uh, Warner Brothers has held the license to Akira since 2002, which, according to the article, is probably when some of you were born. Yeah, the movie came out in 2000, back in the 80s. Let, let me put it that way. The movie came out back in the 80s. Um, I was born in 89. So I, I'm basically... I mean, we're all... If you were born before 2004, we're all fucking millennials, according to my topic from last week. So we're all basically millennials, but... They've been holding it for two, since 2002. That's 15 years that they've been holding this. Eh. But here's where the problem is here. Um, but if Ghost in the Shell makes decent bucks, uh, they suspect this project will finally find its way out of development hell. So, in other words, all the hopes are set on Ghost in the Shell, which people are still bad-mouthing over Scarlett Johansson playing Major Katsuragi. Let it the hell go, guys. Come on. I mean, just let it the hell go. What do you want? They're, they're accusing Hollywood of whitewashing. That was the whole thing right at the start, that people were accusing Hollywood of whitewashing because she was given the role and she wasn't Asian. 
Oh, wow. Let me cry you a river and build you a bridge so you can get the hell over it. Seriously. Ugh. Oh, I just can't believe that with people yet. But, yep. So hopefully Akira will find its way out of development hell. I kind of hope so, but then again, I really have no high hopes for live action adaptations. Every I will say this every single time. You say, I think live action adaptations of anime series or movies are a great idea. First words out of my mouth are going to be Dragon Ball Evolution, Attack on Titan, just to name a few. But I will definitely start with Dragon Ball Evolution every time. Because that was a goddamn train wreck. And they dragged so many people into that, it wasn't even funny. And it was a complete train wreck. So I kind of hope maybe it'll come out of maybe it'll come out of development hell. It would actually make a pretty decent sci-fi flick. I'll say that. It would make a decent sci-fi flick. It would not be one of those. Oh, it's gonna be a weird sort. Of, no, it would make a decent sci-fi flick. I will give it that. It'll, it it would be it would make a decent sci-fi flick. And if they try to market it like that for the live-action version, it would probably do well. But you can't try to make it just like the anime movie. You, you just can't do that. If you want to do this, do this right. Make it a live action version, which is what they want to do. But make it more towards the science fiction end and not towards the animation's end. So try to add some stuff in or change up or tweak how the anime style was. Then go for it. But if you try to make it exactly as it was in the anime version, you're... Forget it. You're not going to do anything because you're going to be looking at that and they're going to go, people are going to go, oh, this is kind of, oh, yeah, no, never mind. And that's how that'll go. Speaking of movies, let's move on to the next topic. Speaking of movies, everybody remembers me bitching about the Power Rangers movie, right? I mean, I've been practically screaming at this thing for the last, what, how, how, how many months? How many months have I been bitching about this movie? Hell, since October at least, I think. I've been royally going to town on this. Almost every chance I get. So, here we go. Uh, last weekend, the Power Rangers movie came out. Alongside Chips, by the way. Now, I have done an Andrew Rance video on this movie. I do not ever plan to see this movie. Because Warner Brothers... Oh, sorry, Lionsgate. I'm sorry. Lionsgate will not get my money for this. I'm not a fan of the entirety of, oh yeah, we're going to have a you know a remake of a series that I grew up with as a child. So it's kind of what killed me, what killed my uh, hope of going in to see it. I don't really plan to see it, I don't want to see it, so there's that. But, that did not stop me from badmouthing this thing to a T. I mean, there were, and there were a lot of things to badmouth it. Let's be honest, they were giving me ammo... Months ahead of it coming out. From Brian Cranston's floating head that looks like pixelated art. To Bill Hadler playing Alpha 5. And Alpha 5 looking like some reject out of an E.T. comic book. Or, or heck, even an E.T. fan fiction. I'll go with that. Uh, Goldar looking like a pile of golden, literally golden shit. The Zords looking crappy. The Megazord looking like a gigantic waste of time and... Oh, God, was it ugly. It just gave me so much ammo to badmouth it. Well, they put their money where their mouth is, and they got second place their first weekend out. But now, let's be fair. Now, this is why I kind of went for this here. Because I wanted to get the entire figures for last week. So I had to wait. Or I would have been bitching about this last week, but I had to wait. Because I wanted to see how it stacked up against everything else that came out that weekend. Now, I'm looking at the top 20... How many am I looking at here? Okay. Okay. I am looking at the top 95 movies. Okay? 95 movies. Ready for this, folks? I'm looking at the top 95 movies to try to get an idea here. 
as to how it's stacked up in general. And the new movies that came out last week, uh, number 94 was The Leveling. I never heard of it. It was probably a standalone flick. Let's see here. Uh, we have A Woman A Part. I called him Morgan. Filaria, or Filari, Wilson, Slamma Jamma, Chips, Life. Those were the movies that came out last weekend. Okay? Alongside Power Rangers. Now, I can safely go from number 24. Yeah, from number 24 up. So. That narrows the list down because I I haven't heard any of the ones below twenty four. I haven't even heard twenty one to be honest with you. But I haven't heard any of them below twenty four. I have not heard of the movie. I call him Morgan. I have not heard of a woman apart or a woman a space part. I've never heard of that. I did not hear about uh, the leveling. I think some of those are probably like uh, standalone films or. Uh, Sword I'm looking for here. Um Ah oh crap. Uh I can't think of it. Films that basically were made by people that Independent films! That's what are independent films. There it is. Independent films. So let's take a look at this. So Power Rangers got second place, uh just coming under Beauty and the Beast by about fifty million. So you're thinking, well that's good. Yeah, but let's think about this for a moment. This is what it had to go up against. It went up against Beauty and the Beast, which it lost to, by the way. It went up against Kong Island, which was already out for two weeks. And I, how many how many weeks was this thing out? Okay, no, no. Kong Island was out for three weeks. Beauty and the Beast was out for two weeks. It went up against Logan and Get Out, both of which uh, Logan was out for four weeks and Get Out was out for five weeks. It went up against the Shack that was out for four weeks, the Lego Batman movie that was out for seven weeks. The Belco Experiment, that was out for two weeks. Hidden Figures, that was out for 14 weeks. And then the list just goes down and down and down. But on top of that, it had to contend with other movies that came out that same weekend. So, let's go with... And I'm actually going to go with number 19 here. Which is Wilson. Then Slamma Jamma, Chips, Life, and it's in the Power Rangers movie. So, it had to go up against Life, Chips, Slamma Jamma, and Wilson. So that kind of gives you a heads up here. Everything was below it. So there really wasn't much out there that came out to kind of balance out the equation. Because everybody went to see Beauty and the Beast the week before. So they knew if it was good or not. So they went to go out and see the Power Rangers movie. So they're like, well, I already saw it the week it came out. You know, I saw Beauty and the Beast the week it came out. I've seen Logan already. I saw Get Out. I've seen the Lego Batman movie. There was nothing for it to go up against that would technically take it down. Nothing at all. The only hope you had was chips, and that bomb miserably failed. Uh, it racked in $7,722,802 for the weekend. That was the gross. It had a budget of $25 million. So that's an $18 million deficit already. <clears throat> that's $18 million you're in the hole. On top of marketing, then, on top of that, so add another, let's say... Oh, hell, I only ever saw YouTube ads for that, so let's just go with a decent, maybe, uh, five grand. I'll go five grand at best. So you're still in the hole. Then you have life. Now, I, now life didn't do too bad. Um, it made $12,501,936. Its budget, however, was $58 million. So, you're at a pretty big deficit there. I mean, you did not bring in anywhere close to your huge bank the first weekend. Now, keep in mind, Yes, there's no way you're going to make that much money in one weekend unless every other movie sucks and you're number one. But the only movies that were out have already been out. The movies that came out that same weekend, either A, nobody heard about it. I mean, Wilson did piss poor. It 
there was like no budget for it or none that they could find that the site could find. And I'm at boxofficemojo.com by the way for this. So Wilson came in at at uh, three hundred thirty six thousand two hundred twenty seven dollars. And uh, Filaria, which is two below it at number 21. Wilson was 19. So two below it at 21 was Filaria. And that was uh, $260,982. The theater count on these things is like 74 for Filaria, 310 for uh, Wilson. 502 for Slamajama, 2,464 for Chips, 3,146 for Life, and 3,693 for Power Rangers. So the only reason why it got second place was literally because there was nothing else good out. It's basically, do I want to go see a remake of... Of a 1970s show, which is basically the Dak Shepard experience at this point, and nothing but penis jokes and male bromancing that's a sausage fest of a stupid run, what's it, like a two hour runtime. It's another movie I'm never going to see. I like the original series. This movie is a disgrace when I saw the trailer for it. Or Life. Those were basically your two big choices to go along with the Power Rangers movie. So it's basically, okay, do I want to go see Life or Chips? Well, Life is basically, oh, well, do I really want to go see a sci-fi movie this week? Well, if I want to go see a sci-fi movie this week, I can just go watch the Power Rangers movie because that qualifies as sci-fi to a point. But then again, I could just go and watch Logan again. I mean, the Power Rangers movie brought in like $40 million dollars. It's forty million three hundred thousand two hundred eighty-eight bucks. The question is, though, like I said, was it worth it? Is it a decent movie? I personally think they wrote a check that those characters could not cash. And then you have the original uh, Pink Ranger and the original Green Ranger. So that would be uh, Amy Jo Johnson and Jason David Frank. They come out and they go, "Oh, it's a great movie." Oh, it's a wonderful movie. Everybody loves it. You know, oh, it's great. These actors really do the parts well. And I'm thinking to myself, no. I'm thinking to myself, no. Th- they do not do a good job on this. It's, they don't do a good job at all. But, all right, sure, why not? We'll, we'll go with that. No, we'll go with it. I don't know. Is it going to do this well, though, this weekend? Oh, God, no. It'll get it'll get put in its place this weekend. Finally, I'm hoping it'll get put in its place because the novelty is now worn off. They know what's happening. They know what's going on. Nobody's gonna want to go and see it again. They'll go and see either Beauty and the Beast or they'll finally just tank and go see Life or they'll go see Logan for a third week. You know who knows? Maybe they'll go back and see the Batman movie. I don't know. And I should say maybe fifth week. But then again, it might be the third week for somebody to go see Logan. It's been out for four weeks. Maybe somebody's seen it three times. I don't know. I don't know. Might be good. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, I don't see it panning out too well for them. I don't see it uh, ending well. The Power Rangers movie was, like I said, a massive joke. It gave me ammunition for weeks just to rip it a new one. And they have the audacity to go, oh, yeah, well... That's what's going to happen. That's the new form of movies. And I'm thinking, no, that's just garbage. You just wanted to remake it. Try to get a cash grab. And I'm not blaming Ham Saban at all for this. I I do not blame him for this. Because there really wasn't anything he could have done to prevent this nightmare. We all knew that this was coming. We all knew that it was going to happen eventually. There's nothing we could have done. So I'm not blaming him at all. Okay, moving right along, we're singing Life on a Feather. I guess so, I don't know. But anyway, speaking of moving right along, how about Sailor Moon? Do you ever want to fight evil by moonlight and win love by daylight? Never run from a real fight? Do you ever want to be like Sailor Moon, or at least close to Sailor Moon? Ever want to just have a Sailor Moon fan club or something? I mean, let's face it, when the original series came out, you were probably hanging with your friends in elementary school or middle school going... Yo, let's start the Sailor Scouts. Like you and six friends. We're going to be the Sailor Scouts or something. Let's. Now, I had a crush on Sailor Jupiter. So, as far as I'm concerned, 
anybody that was making fun of Sailor Jupiter could have been getting a size, I think I wore size 12 back in elementary school. Uh, maybe I like Ellen. <coughs> well, they could have, they would have been getting a foot up their ass. Needless to say. But anyway, it's over 20 years old. And in the name of the moon, I think it's time you can join the club. So in the name of the moon, join the club. Uh, despite being over 20 years old and one of the most influential anime and manga series of all time. Uh, yeah, it was even in a Bare Naked Lady song. Although they called it uh, a cartoon with the boom anime babes, which it's not really a cartoon. It's an anime series. But all right, it was the 90s. It was the 90s. Nobody's going to care. Well, it somehow took until the beginning of last year for Sailor Moon to get an official fan club, the Pretty Guardians. Which I'm wondering if they might have had an issue with the copyright of that. Uh, that might be what's uh, what held them up, I'm wondering. But anyway, um, here's what we got. We're well into 2017. Signups are opening up again. This time with a much anticipated English language option. Which means that you that speak English can join the Pretty Guardians and be as close to the Sailor Scouts as you can get. <clears throat> so what do members of the Pretty Guardians get? You're wondering that, right? Well, for the low, low cost of $58 for fans outside of Japan, by the way, you can get quite a bit. Just signing up gets you a numbered membership card with an illustration by original manga author Nako Taki, Takeuchi along with a moon stick pendant to let others know you're a fashionable member of the club. Okay, we'll go with that. <sighs> Renewing members, meanwhile, get a Sailor Moon stationery collection, a reproduction of a set originally given away to readers of the manga magazine Nakayoshi... or Naki... Yeah, yeah Nakayoshi, yeah. Okay. Did I spell something wrong? I don't know. Did I spell something wrong? Or... Oh, okay. No, uh, Nakayoshi, where the series originally ran in the 90s. I thought I read the wrong thing earlier. Okay, no, I'm good. Beyond these initial freebies, members also get access to early ticket sales for Sailor Moon stage events, a newsletter, and access to back archives for Sailor Moon voice actress Kotono Mitsushi. 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 Yeah, okay. I, I do pronounce these names wrong, and I do apologize. But you can get uh, back archives to her Punishment Radio. Yeah, you're sold, right? Registering, like I said, as a pretty guardian will cost you about 58 bucks outside of Japan, with English language registration being handled by Tokyo Otaku Mode. So, want to join the pretty guardians? Go check out a Tokyo Otaku Mode. They'll hook you up. All right, who remembers Mobile Fighter G Gundam? Gundam Fight Ready! And go! I think that's how I don't even remember how it goes anymore. Mobile, I think it was Mobile Fighters Ready? Go, or something like that. But anyway, uh, Mobile Fighter G Gundam is finally coming to Crunchyroll. So you can finally hear Domo and Kashu's immortal line of This hand of mine is glowing red. Its loud cry tells me to tell you to come to Crunchyroll to watch Mobile Fighter G Gundam. <laughs> so uh, Sunrise Mecha shows slowly but surely appear on Western streaming services. Uh, the one title that remains conspicuously absent was Mobile Fighter G Gundam uh, until now anyway. Originally aired in 1994, G Gundam broke with series tradition by ensuing the Gundam's the Gundam franchise's unusual attempt at depicting gritty sci-fi war stories to tell a ridiculously over-the-top martial arts epic instead. And I know, honestly, I liked that. I mean, that was a lot better. Uh, the director Yashihiro Imagawa, uh, giant Robo, the animation and bartender, by the way, is stuff that he did. Uh, dives deep into the turn of the series into a personal love letter to Chinese Wuxi... Yeah, I can't even pronounce it. It's W-U-X-I-A. Storytelling tropes and super robot bombast in equal measure. 
The result is a series that starts ridiculous, but proceeds to crank the dial higher and higher, refusing to back down. And it was damn good, too. Refusing to surrender when martial arts mentor Master Asia's horse gets its own robot so that his robot can ride a horse robot. That is it. That is my personal definition of cool Japan, according to the author of the article, Jason Moses. And I have to damn well agree on that. Funsaiki was really cool. Come on, Funsaiki. Let's do that would have been something cool to just yell. Uh, something of an acquired taste, though, however, but it does stir great joy within uh, his heart. I should say it was uh, Jason Moses. I'm quoting the article here. Uh, to know the new generation now has easier access to this magnificent series than ever before. Could have also just bought the whole series on eBay for like 30 bucks. I mean, I had most of the series in separate DVDs that I was buying at F on FYE, so... But either way, it's nice to see Mobile Fighter G Gundam has joined the Crunchyroll family. Now, if only Crunchyroll can make it so that you actually get access to stuff a little faster and fix the little glitching that I seem to keep having every time I try to watch something on there, then we'll be in business. Okay, I got two topics left. Two. You ready, Professor, for the long run? You've been quiet tonight. And what the hell are you eating over there? <coughs> nothing, nothing. nothing. I'm, not, I'm not eating anything, Andrew. I'm not, I'm not eating anything. Yeah. No. Yeah. <coughs> I'm not, I'm not eating a thing. Looks like you were eating... Are you eating my pizza? No. Sorry, folks. Professor Club's about to uh, disappear for a little bit. Uh, he's... Wow. For a fat guy, he can run pretty fast. Anyway, I got two topics left for the night. <laughs> I got two topics left. Um... Uh, a man has, admit, has admitted to releasing cockroaches at an anime music event. Uh, this apparently happened last summer, but justice has finally been delivered at last. Uh, the man responsible for, for, for throwing cockroaches around at the Annie Mello Summer Live concert last summer has finally admitted to his wrongdoing. It took him almost a year, huh? The suspect, a 33-year-old chef, oh, that explains where he got the cockroaches, I'm not saying that all chefs have that, but for some reason, I seem to know crooked chefs can find cockroaches. I do mean that. I mean, crooked chefs can find anything. Uh, from Hagashi Osaka, uh, by the name of Katsuyuki, Kazuyuki Iwatani. Admitted to releasing a handful of flightless red cockroaches near the audience seating area at the Saitama Arena last August, prompting bewildered and disgust from nearby members of the audience. Thankfully, no one was harmed, and the concert proceeded as normal despite the minor disruption. What isn't clear is exactly what Iwatani's motives were for releasing the bugs in the first place. Yeah, this, this isn't like... Uh, because earlier this week I had a trivia question. Uh, the man that tried to assassinate uh, the one president was doing it to gain the attention of what celebrity? It was uh, Jody Foster. And I can't remember what the what the president's name that the guy tried to assassinate or what the guy's name was at the top of my head, and that really bugs me. I, I got to do more memory exercises, I guess. But it's basically. Uh, so, what was the point of this? I mean, were the try I mean, was this guy trying to get the attention of the band, of the musical group? Uh, was he just, you know, a little bit disturbed? We don't know. Uh, his mo yeah. So they're asking, uh, did he simply want the flightless insects to enjoy a night of anime music majesty along with the rest of the crowd? I doubt that. Highly taking that insects can't hear. They feel vibrations, but then again, they, they could have enjoyed that. Or were his motives more malicious? Like a Tootsie Pop, the world may never know. And that's sad but true, unfortunately, because either he shut up or his lawyers shut him up. Either way, the world may never know. But still, that's disgusting. I mean, you're chucking cockroaches. The world's foremost bringer of disease. Innocent people for what? That's disgusting. That's why I don't really ever want to go to a concert. You don't know what crazy shit people are going to do. 
I mean, you could be getting, you could get front row seats and go, man, this was worth the back-breaking labor. I get front row seats to a concert, have ear damp, you know, have sound dampening uh, earbuds. You can still hear the music, but not have it blaring right at you so you don't go deaf. That would be really neat. And then just to have somebody chuck cockroaches on you. Well, there's a nightmare that I'm never getting out of my mind. That's just disgusting. All right. Hi, Professor Klump. Welcome back. Uh, hello, Andrew. Uh, I thought maybe I should come back and help you finish out the podcast this week. Well, I got one topic left, Professor. It's the, it's the uh, I should say, the fan-requested topic. Oh, a fan-requested topic. I like that. So uh, who requested the topic? This was a Twitter request, actually. It was from uh, KEM. I it's like Kimi, I think it is, or Kemi. I can't pronounce it, and I do apologize for that. However, I put out a thing this week on Twitter asking anybody for any ideas for the topics for the CU for the, uh, for the absolutely completely random podcast this week. I almost said the wrong podcast there. Oh, yes, yeah, you, you almost did. Almost did, Andrew. Almost did. So, anyway, uh, I asked for topic ideas, and Kimi. Kind of, or Kemi, or however, I do apologize, I don't know how to pronounce that, uh, replied with artificial flowers. Now, I just had to double check because there actually is a song called Artificial Flowers. It's an oldie song, very, very old. I think like my grandfather would probably know about it. And I'm like, okay, so the song or the plants? The plants. Oh, okay, not a problem. So that's your requested topic for this week is artificial flowers. And artificial flowers are actually something that I kind of enjoy. And I actually do know something about them. Believe it or not, you didn't throw me a curveball, which is good. It was a straight line pitch, and I hate baseball, so how I know those analogies is very, very weird. But I actually do know some stuff about artificial plants, so artificial flowers and that. Uh, my mom and I were getting some of those at our local Dollar Tree to uh, put on my grandmother's grave. One, because they'll last for a while. Two, they look a lot nicer than real plants. And three, they're extremely cheap. I mean, you can pick some up at Walmart for like less than five bucks. You can get a whole bouquet. A whole bouquet. So it's really neat. They definitely are a pain, though, when it comes to if you want to separate them and make your own little, you know, bouquets and stuff like that they are a royal pain in the ass uh some of them will have a metal wire inside of it some of them will have a fake you know like a plastic wire type thing in it wire cutters can sometimes break trying to cut those but they do look they're a lot nicer than actual plants they're a lot nicer than their real life counterparts because they have the beauty that the real ones do, and what's neat about them is they keep that beauty the whole year long. I mean, you could pretty much set up one entire one, and just for that whole year, it's going to stay the way it is. Unless you stick it outside and it gets sun damaged or something, it's going to stay the same way. It's really neat. They are kind of neat. Uh, one of the, I should say they are kind of neat, but <laughs> one of the problems uh, that I usually have with them is... Sticking them in, because you end up getting like one of those styrofoam uh, cubes to put them all in to make your bouquet in or something to stick them in. And they sometimes, you feel like you have to push a little too hard, put too much pressure to get them through. I mean, Professor Clump, have you ever had that? Uh, no, unfortunately, I, I haven't. Uh, my mama, see, mama kind of likes uh, using regular flowers. She likes real plants. No, I don't blame her. I don't blame her at all. She likes using real flowers. And my wife likes using real plants, too. Although occasionally I like getting the fake rose. And, you know, getting like a whole entire bouquet of roses. And then get that one fake one. I'll tell her that my love for you will never die so long as the last rose in here never, you know, wilts. She usually never figures it out until uh, all the other ones have died and uh, there's still one fake one in there. That's romantic, Professor. Oh, well, thank you, Andrew. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. You see, clumsy Charles sometimes, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, sometimes. Not all the time, though, Professor. No, oh, yeah, yeah, not all the time. Not all the time, though, but I am in charge. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, that was your... I guess... Is there any other words on artificial flowers, Professor? Uh, no, I don't really have any. You have any more? 
Uh, no, they're relatively available. You can pick them up at any arts and crafts store. I recommend checking out your local Dollar Trees, though, because they are very widely available there. Different plants with different times of the year, and you can actually combine them. I recommend the summer ones actually do look very nice, though. I do recommend those if you get a chance to pick some up. Uh, they do look very beautiful. Uh, the summer and the spring ones look very beautiful. The winter ones are usually darker, but the summer ones are a lot brighter. But I do recommend them if you get a chance to pick them up. And uh, Kemi on Twitter, I hope this was your hope this satisfies your topic requests. And don't forget, everybody, you can also request topics by simply tweeting them to me on Twitter. You can follow me at Otake Roads, and you can tweet me with a topic idea for the absolutely completely random podcast. Speaking of the podcast, that's going to wrap it up for me this week, folks. I've been here for just a little over an hour. Accidentally paused my recording at one point, so uh, there probably was like a little glitch or a little dip in there. I do apologize. I tried to think the last word that I said and just repeat it, so I've been doing that a lot tonight anyway. But needless to say, folks, it has been fun being here with you. And like always, if you have any ideas and ways that can improve the podcast, feel free to email me. Uh, yeah. If you have any ideas and ways that can improve the podcast, uh, any topics you'd like me to discuss on the podcast, you can also tweet those to me, by the way, the topics. Uh, if you'd like to sponsor the podcast or just want to say hi and have a question you want to ask me that you want answered here on the podcast for future Q&A sessions. We didn't have enough time to do any tonight, though, and I didn't... Well, I only had one left anyway, and I think it's the one I've been rattling now for, like, the last two weeks. I just ran out of time this week. Sorry about that. Uh, send them all. Any questions. If you, want to if you want to take a chance and sponsor the podcast. If you have any topic ideas that you don't want to tweet me. If you want to keep them, you know anonymous which is fine i can do that or if you just want to say hi say you know i really like your podcast you do a good job or you want to call me a moron and an asshole i don't care uh you can send all of that stuff via email to acrpodcast at gmail.com that's all lowercase a c r podcast at gmail.com like I said before, you can also follow me on Twitter at Otake Rhodes, and that is going to do it for me this week. I am Andrew Rhodes, uh, Professor. Would you like to say the final farewell? Oh yeah, you're actually giving it to me. Yeah, you can have oh, Clumps and Charles, Clumps and Charles. Oh yes. <clears throat> uh, thank you everybody for coming out to the absolutely completely random podcast for Saturday, April first, two thousand and seventeen. Uh, my name is Professor Sherman T. Club, and I'd like to thank you all once again. I'm just an honor that Club was in charge of this final portion. <laughs> final portion, I was in charge. Uh, so thank you, everybody, for being out here on the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast this week, and I look forward to seeing you possibly next week. Possibly next week, depending on if I'm going to be exhausted or have to go into work Sunday morning. I don't know. But, yep, hopefully I'll see everybody next week. And until then, have a nice weekend, and have a very, very, very pleasant tomorrow. Club was in charge! Club in charge!